everyone, it's Jesse from Bear Flower Farm. Today is March 20th and it is a gorgeous day outside. It's 51 degrees despite having a low of 22 degrees Fahrenheit. If you've been following me, you'll know that there's a bunch of work being done outside of this confined area that I'm growing flowers in. So one being in the back where those vegetable beds are, that was actually where I overwintered my ranunculus. So I had to transplant them all out here, but I thought today would actually be a good time for me to do a early spring farm tour for you. Actually, my local grower friend uh, really wanted a tour. So Jess, this one's for you. But yeah, so I've been nesting on maternity leave. So I'm 39 weeks and a few days pregnant. And I have been blessed with this great weather to continue working outside. And a lot of stuff has been overwintering. So I thought today would be a good time for me to show you that progress. Now, before I show you everything, a couple of things to keep in mind. I said that a lot of stuff is overwintering. So the stuff that's been overwintering, my friend Jess grew for me starting in like mid to late July. And then she gave it to me in late August. So I started transplanting anywhere from late August to mid September. So they've been in here for a while. The second thing I want to note is that I am really bad at covering. I'm really bad at just like structures and being responsible for nurturing things which is why I don't grow from seed but um, despite that you're gonna see the difference between growing under cover aka the cover being on when it's not windy but the cover also blowing off all this being said it was a very mild winter so I'm not sure what would have happened if we got a lot of ice and snow but without further ado let me show you what's in the garden right now so first things first, let's look at this low tunnel that I constructed from irrigation piping instead of PVC piping. And again, you know, if we had a lot of snow load, I don't think this would have worked this year, but it worked really well given the mild winter. We didn't really have much snow. If we had snow, it literally melted. But I overwintered my snapdragons in here and some canterbury bell so the snapdragon are actually doing really really well i mean look at this so i did end up uh trimming down uh a couple of weeks ago and the ones that i've trimmed down like this is a really good example over here it's really put up a lot of good growth over here there's good growth so this is what it was like growing under cover now again this cover would blow on and off this is actually just agribon this is the fabric this is the thinnest fabric so you know I have a thicker fabric over there but I didn't get it till later in the season and I want to show you the difference so there are Canterbury bells in here which you can see are relatively decent looking I mean like look at that it's put on really really good growth and then I ran out of agarbon over here so this part was not covered and there's still Canterbury bells which overwinter really well in my zone 6b here but you can definitely tell that they're a little bit less robust but they're going to be fine the point is that they just didn't do as well now the snapdragons that were completely uncovered um because i was trying to do like a control um and experiment group looked like this so this one survived but a lot of them didn't and i ended up ripping them out to accommodate for the ranunculus that i had to transplant and so now we've gotten to this side which is all baby new ranunculus that i started in late january unfortunately i found out we have a bit of a rabbit issue so there's one over here that got chewed down pretty well but let me show you what some of the overwintered ranunculus look like i mean i did transplant them over here so you know to a certain extent they're like half overwintered i guess but you know they did put on some pretty good growth and I'm gonna keep these covered tonight because it's gonna hit 27 degrees but even if I didn't they would be fine because the ranunculus down there I did not cover last night it went down to 22 degrees and it was totally fine so now I'm gonna show you some other stuff that's been in the field I've had a chance to do some weeding in some areas but in other areas I haven't it's a little bit unruly so I did some prep over the fall but 
really not to the extent that I should have, but at the same time, I like having some dead stuff as cover for the soil so that it doesn't erode too much and that it protects the soil over the winter. So luckily, because I've been given this nesting time by my company, I've been able to clean some of these beds, but you are gonna see weeds, you're gonna see a lot of chive seeds, and honestly, it's totally okay. So I'm just giving you that fair warning before I show you everything else. So I have tulips basically popping up everywhere because I ended up putting in more tulips than I thought I would into the field because they just were not sufficient for hydro forcing. This was kind of like a last ditch attempt in terms of finding space to put tulips, but you know, they look pretty good. These are probably in a uh, younger stage, we'll call it, than some of the other tulips that you'll see. But here's some Sweet William. I mean, literally, these are still sunflower stalks that I had from last year. And I just kind of threw them on the ground hoping that they will hope, uh, eventually decompose. But you can see I've got yarrow in the ground that has more or less overwintered pretty well. Something was actually digging here and dug up some of my yarrow. So you can see why there are some holes in here. But I have so much yarrow that like it really doesn't matter at this point. This is some Rudbeckia. So the Rudbeckia, I would say, it definitely overwintered, like it's clearly fine, but it did not um, it did not put on as much growth as I thought it would. So more over here. And then this is actually Larkspur, which is a bit surprising to me how well it's grown because these were uh, started in soil blocks by Jess. They were given to me relatively last minute. I put these in, I think even like early November. And I was just like, if they live, they live. But if they don't, then they don't. And they are doing really well, especially compared to some of the other stuff in the field. So now we get to this bed. This bed, this bed actually was status before. I ripped it all out a few days ago. There was some snapdragon over there. I also ripped that all out. And this is all new soil that I had to transplant or I had to transfer from down there in my vegetable gardening bed. This is really good soil. I've been feeding it with our food scraps through something called the Bakashi method. So this is really, really rich soil. I left some snapdragons in. These are, I think, Potomac apple blossom, but these are, I mean, they survived the elements. Uh, they're kind of sparse, so we'll see how that works in terms of when I plant other stuff in here, but I just want to see how well they would grow. So this is basically a bed that is prepped and ready to go for whatever I decide to put in there in a month or two. This here was my famous stock aisle, and you can see through the winter just this aisle's gotten a little bit more narrow. So one of the things I want to do is I want to weed it. I want to pull the chips back a bit and put some more new compost on here. So this is going to be a relatively free bed up to here. And then I had run out of space when I was trying to plant the seedlings in. So there's some random Rudbeckia in here. And then of course there's more yarrow as a patch over here. And I would say that the yarrow for the most part has done pretty well in this section. I mean, you can even see that there's some top growth on this yarrow over here. Next up, we have more stuff that I need to clean, straw flower. I did not do anything with the straw flower. I'm actually half hoping it might reseed, we'll see. But there's a lot of weeds going on over here. I need to clean it. Here we get to my Sweet William aisle. This Sweet William has been such a trooper over the winter. I mean, you know, kind of there were days where it looked really white and a little bit dead, but you can tell it's clearly thriving. And what I love about it is that even though there's some weeds in between, for the most part, it's kind of choked out the ability for other weed seeds to sprout up. So that's really, really nice. As I keep on going, there's fever few over here. I'm growing three different types of fever few. So this fever few is looking really, really good. And this is what I call my lupin graveyard. Cause there is one lupin that survived the overwintering process. And even then it's really small, but I mean, it's still alive. And I have no idea what happened to the rest, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to clear this eventually and then put on new compost and obviously, um, you know, expand the aisles a little bit more too. All right, in this aisle over here, this is actually where I grew a lot of our vegetables last year. So I put some more tulips in here. This is all relatively empty. I'm actually gonna be planning on growing sunflowers, I think 
once I pull out the tulips over there. But now we get into my garlic aisle. So there is some garlic here and then there's nothing over here until you get to tulips. So this will be more for sunflowers later on. I have another whole aisle that is dedicated to garlic. I think I put something like 200 garlics in and they look great. I mean, they started sprouting back in like November, December because of our mild winter and clearly they're still fine and alive. So the next to that, we have more fever few. This is probably the sadder looking of all of the fever few. Um, you can see that there's some purple leaves over here, but it's fine. They're putting on more, um, more new growth that's green. And you know, there's some weeding that needs to be done. There's a lot of like chives and wild grass chive type of stuff that's growing in here. So I do need to get rid of that eventually. And you can actually see we have a little bit of verbescum that is growing in here. This is something new that I am trialing this year. Verbescum is really pretty. The problem is the vase life is not really great. So we'll see how that goes. But again, more patches of tulips over here. So the tulips here are a little bit more advanced. I think this is actually a parrot. I should have labeled these tulips. I didn't have enough time when I was throwing them all in, but um, these tulips actually popped up so early. They popped up in late January that I threw more soil on top. That's why there's a bit of a mound, but you can see that even though we hit 22 degrees last night, this is still totally fine. So at this stage, even if you get that freezing or below freezing weather, it's fine. It's when these start to color up and they start to bloom, that's when you have an issue when it's freezing and you do want to cover. So now we kind of hit this long tulip aisle over here. I actually buried some food waste in here. That's why there's nothing. But now we have sections of different varieties of tulips. And then we get to the fever few section again. So, you know, it could be a lot more neat. I could have everything together, but I, for whatever reason, ended up planting things in patches and chunks. And that's why there's tulips over here more fever few over here you know hopefully there's a bit of diversity in here that benefits the growing but at the end of the day you know the flowers are in the ground and they look pretty good this this fever few is looking good so i'm pretty excited to see how this is going to grow so just a couple more rows this here is actually bee balm or Menar or lambada and lambada actually perennializes down to zone seven so I'm zone 6B and I'm just surprised that they're still alive, but I love the bee balm that I got from Jess last year. So these are seedlings that actually went in in July. I thought I was gonna be able to get a flush from them. The soil was actually too hydrophobic at the time. And then by the time I course corrected, it was already winter, but they still lived. More tulips here. This is actually sea holly mixed with a lot of wild chives. This is what sea holly looks like when it's overwintered. This is a high value crop. So really excited that these seem to have done overwintering. Um, they're still alive. And I have basically a whole row that is dedicated to them until we get to here, which is another variety of Sweet William. So you can tell from here that this variety and the variety that I showed you before over there they're actually two different types of varieties, and this one is not as robust as the other one. And Jess was actually telling me that she suspected that these would not be as robust. So over here, I actually have a dahlia plant that I forgot to um, bring it inside. And at this point, this thing is so lightweight. Um, you know, the tubers have completely rotted, and this is what it looks like when you leave it out for all winter. So. Basically, there's no mass left, but this is foxglove. So this is some foxglove that we'll have hopefully this spring. And this is the dahlia rose that I never cleared up. So I'm curious to see with our mild winter if the tubers will still be alive. I ended up uh, saving the tubers of the ones that I really, really cared about. So we'll see how this is. Um, I did clear up this part to, again, dig some or to bury some food waste in here so all of this will be available for dahlias or maybe i'll switch it up just so that um i'm switching up the the soil and not nurturing any potential diseases 
But yeah, there's a lot of cleanup that is still needed between these rows. So there is one row left. It's a bit of a mess. I actually have some crates down there. I'm trying to grow lettuce in there since we don't have the vegetable beds over there. But you know, this is this is pretty much it. Um, it's pretty crazy because when you stare at this field from our house, you can start to see the green coming up from the tulips. Tonight, I'm going to cover again the hoops over here just because it's going to go down to 27 degrees. But after tonight, we're we're in the clear. Um, it's going to be above, I would say, 33, 35 degrees, at least for the foreseeable future. It's going to be beautiful during the day. The only concern is the rabbits, so I might continue to cover to prevent the rabbits from munching down on the ranunculus. But other than that, you know, I'm pretty happy with where things are. So I was planning to have a relatively... Um, we'll call it easier spring. I didn't want to have to be transplanting anything because uh, back last year I knew I was pregnant and I didn't want April to be a time where I was frantically trying to plant stuff into the field. So that's why I have so much stuff being overwintered. Um, you know, that being said, I think that there's going to be a lot more work, especially once the tulips come probably I give them another four to six weeks so we're looking at later April early May and then we're gonna have that lull and then the ranunculus will come in and then all the other stuff will come in probably in late May early June so I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen but yeah this is what the farm looks like looks like right now um and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and 